detect emergencies. Interactive controls are used to insert malfunctions and monitor system status. There are approximately 6,800 simulated malfunctions which can be activated either manually or automatically. A script is written to give direction to a simulated mission. If it requires some coordination of malfunctions, we'll have a meeting, say, two or three days uh, before the session. I'll outline what the lesson is, and then from there, I'll let the individual instructors then start adding their inputs into the malfunctions that they like on each of those cases and we'll outline each run in terms of each malfunction that's going to go in on that run and we'll give it a time when that malfunction is going in and then the impact that, that malfunction will have and we'll end up with a, a script package for a, for a particular lesson which um, will have all the different runs in it I try to make sure that they get a well-rounded uh, training and from each lesson to lesson to make sure that we've covered all the objectives that we can. Can't go to SM because we got that one on SM that's off confirmed. Approximately 10 weeks prior to launch, the crew begins the final flight specific training. Bypass ISO circuit breaker on L4. Columbia Houston Energy, ground track and nav are go. Roger Houston. Instructors apply a carrot and stick approach to the training dynamic. But the team spirit keeps the necessary instructional sabotage in good-natured perspective. We started off a long time ago joking about uh, the stick and the carrot approach, where uh, if somebody goofs up and doesn't run the malfunction right, uh, you either beat them with a stick or hold a carrot out in front of them if they, if they did it right. So it became a, uh, a means of, of rewarding them for something done. I know one of the guys brought me a carrot that's, that's this big around that he grew in his garden out there, and uh, nobody's done anything that good yet to, just, to earn that carrot. This is in accordance with the traditions of SMS teammates. I'd like to show our respect and our appreciation. So I did a heck of a job. I'd like to present these to you. So, uh, you Meanwhile, at Cape Canaveral on the eastern shore of Florida, the final assembly of the shuttle is quickly coming to a dramatic conclusion. First, the solid rocket booster segments are stacked on the mobile launching platform. Next, the external tank is lifted 350 feet above the ground and lowered between the boosters in a delicate and demanding six-hour ordeal. Finally, the shuttle orbiter is rolled to the vehicle assembly building to be mated to tank and boosters. A massive handling sling holds the 200-ton orbiter for a final inspection of the landing gear. Then the shuttle is lifted from a horizontal to a vertical position, suspended over the fuel tank assembly, and lowered into place. This 12-hour operation is the most critical part of the final assembly process. As the completed shuttle rolls from the assembly building to the launch pad, the three and a half mile crawl offers the team a moment of reflection before the countdown. Sunday, April 12, 1981. The space shuttle, 14 stories high. A liftoff weight of four and a half million pounds. Columbia poised on the pad for its maiden flight. It's 54 and a half hour mission to prove the practicality of claiming the space frontier. An American spaceship has never carried a human crew on its first voyage. Columbia will leave planet Earth with a pair of highly trained explorers. Commander John Young with 533 hours in space. He is the most experienced astronaut in the American space program. Pilot Robert Crippen this will be his first experience in space. Twenty-seven hundred reporters and photographers from around the world are on hand to record the event. Over six hundred thousand spectators surround the Kennedy Space Center. T-minus ten, nine, eight, seven, We've gone for main engine start.
the shuttle in the first few moments of flight puts the craft into a precise heading. Forty seconds into flight, the Columbia is too high for the astronauts to safely use their ejector seats. This is the point of no return. Roger, Columbia on the night ride. You're lofting a little bit, but you'll probably be slightly high at sea. Negative seats. Columbia, you're negative seats. Roger, Roger. The fuel expended, the solid rocket boosters are released and yeah. fall back to yeah. Earth. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. Now you're calling me a little early. Okay. Houston, uh, just for your information, uh, you dropped those SRVs right on target, and uh, they were floating just the way they ought to be, and uh, the boats were getting ready to fish them and bring them back. The boosters are recovered 150 miles from the launch site. Towed back to land, they will be refurbished and used again. On the shuttle, another main engine blast takes the craft to an altitude of 172 miles, with 42 million horsepower. Before the main engine cut off and release, the ship will be cruising at 18,000 miles per hour. Columbia, Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're going to let you stay up there for a couple days. Your gopher on orbit. This maiden flight of Columbia demonstrated the space shuttle's ability to facilitate scientific experiments and satellite maintenance. Future missions will be able to release high-tech equipment cheaper and with more accuracy of position than ever before achieved. Earth studies will also be enhanced with information gathered from the unique perspective of space. 500 enhanced images of Earth were captured on the first flight alone. Sand dunes, 1,500 feet high. Islands. The soaring height of the Himalayas. Wide expanses in Iran exposed to devastating wind erosion. Down on the planet's surface, a special team of 24 vehicles and 100 people prepare to power down Columbia after its landing in the California desert. The public is on hand as well. A string of traffic six miles long surrounds the base as a half million people come to witness Columbia's return. Re-entry begins at 17,000 miles per hour, 26 times the speed of sound. When it touches down, it will be traveling at 216 miles per hour. But the space shuttle has no propulsion power. As it glides back into the atmosphere, it must land on the first attempt. And John, we're showing you rolling right. Looking good. Fast, normal roll. Okay, the gear is coming down at 270. Fresh from space, mission commander John Young shared his jubilation. I can't tell you what a tribute that is to the American working man and the American working woman, too. You can't imagine the variety of people who worked on this vehicle, from all walks of life, all capabilities and limitations. It's all due to their individual efforts. They proved that they can do the job. They proved it for the world to see. And I'm mighty proud to be associated with folks like that. over 3.8 million pounds of highly explosive rocket fuel to lift the space shuttle and her crew into orbit. But once